Say with you the anointing. Say the anointed. Put on Psalm 92 verse 10 for me. Psalm 92 verse 10. Yes, but my horn, listen to this. You have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Number one, it is not a sin to say that you are anointed. Only the devil, even if it is somebody, if you're walking and you're saying you are anointed and somebody is telling you, uh, you know, you're full of pride and don't talk like that. No, 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 no. That is a devil speaking or a religious spirit speaking that is trying to stop you or your destiny from coming to pass. You are anointed with fresh oil. But King David says, my horn you have exalted, meaning you have promoted me to the highest place. And you have anointed me with fresh oil, meaning you have given me strength to be promoted. Strength for promotion can only come via the anointing. Are you guys with me? I want to speak about three levels of the anointing or three specific anointings that believers go through. They say 30-fold, 60-fold and 100-fold anointing. Go with me to Matthew chapter number Go with me to uh, uh, Matthew chapter number 13, verse 8. Before you go there, go Ecclesiastics 9, verse 8. Ecclesiastics 9, verse 8. Listen to this. Let your, read this with me. Say, let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. Say it again. Say, let my head lack no oil. This is a commandment in scripture where you're saying, how do you get oil with your garments being white? How does your garments become white? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you guys with me? A believer that is sanctified, not only justified. You have justified believers, you have sanctified believers. And then you have glorified believers. Sanctified believers are those who are walking in a place of sanctification, they're living in a place of holiness, not without sin or no, having no sin, being perfect, but they're walking in consecration and commitment to the call of God. And God calls them a sanctified believer. Are you guys with me? Then you have many, you have people who are friends of the cross, and then you have believers who are enemies of the cross. They are spies that will come into our service to spy us out. They are enemies of the cross. One person came in. I think they think they're God's gift to mankind. I don't know anything about it. I just heard a testimony eight months afterwards. They said that I prayed for them. And as I stood in front of them to prophesy over them, I said, I cannot see anything. Uh, that the power you have is so much stronger than my power. And this person went and wrote it about everywhere. They're from the occult and they come into the... Many of them don't even know they're in the occult. There might be some sitting here, they might not even know you're in the occult. Until the fire gets hotter. You soon, all of a sudden, find out that you feel uncomfortable in a service. Or you don't feel at home. You don't feel like... You feel like you're, you're not in your own body. You feel like you, you have to get out. This is not at home for you. No, 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 no. It is not at home for the devil. The glory and the presence of God is your atmosphere of your home for your spirit. It is the atmosphere where your spirit thrives in, where your spirit lives in. But it is uncomfortable for the things that is not of God. Are you guys with me? That is why there's an anointing that is needed in services. That is why the church cannot, say with me, cannot do without the anointing. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Say with you the anointing. Christianity is a dead religion without the anointing. 
for many religion has killed you them. Are you guys with me? So let my head, say with me, let my head lack no oil. Let there never be a moment that my head does not have the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon it. Why do we lay hands on people and pray for them? It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Nowhere does the Bible despise that or say that we cannot do that. It says lay hands on no man suddenly in, con in context of appointment or ordination. Not in importation. Are you guys with me? So when we pray for people, it is just to give them a fresh infilling. Are you guys with me? This thing cannot be done without the anointing. Christianity is impossible without the anointing. But listen to me. Centurion has become very familiar. Because you know you've been in church now for five years. Uh, so we go to Kruger's Dorp and it's raw power. We come to Centurion people are like, ah. What can you this guy tell me? Oh, I've seen all of this. I know all of this. If you want to kill the anointing, become familiar. Familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity stopped Jesus himself in his footsteps, unable to do any miracle. Jesus himself. The only thing called unbelief and familiarity told Jesus or was limiting God in the flesh to not perform any great miracle. Are you guys with me? One thing I don't want us to get into, especially by centurion, is familiarity. It is a sickness and a disease that kills the anointing. It removes honor. It brings in dishonor. And it seats witchcraft in the place where God is supposed to be. There's now this movement type of thing. Uh, where... They say they refuse to use any titles. Let me explain. You know, I'm going to do a teaching one day online on what titles is. Uh, first of all, a prophet is not a title. A prophet is a name. Jesus himself says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Are you guys with me? He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. So the fivefold is names and not titles. We refuse. So there's this whole church group, charismatic, on TV, everywhere and they say we refuse to use titles and we refuse to call anybody by a title now what they don't understand is they grieve the holy ghost because they're not refusing a title they're refusing a name that was an ascension gift a part of christ given to the body and they say we refuse to accept or honor or even recognize that which Christ has given to the body. And that is why there's no revival. And you sit in these churches and it is amazing. Many salvations. Everything is happening except miracles. Deliverance. Jesus says, where I cast out devils by the finger of God you will know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. 
If you're sitting in a church and there's no devils being cast out, you're not in a church. I'm going to say it again. If you're sitting in a church and there's no devils being cast out, the kingdom is not in that church. The kingdom is absent in that church. The first thing the devil removes is the casting out of devils. Are you guys with me? Have, have your seats, have your seats. So, so they, they, these churches, we call them seeker sensitive churches. Seeker sensitive movements. All they worry about is the visitor. He's going to be offended if we do an altar call, so let's not do an altar call. I've been in one of those churches only once. My soul thought I was going to die and I left after 20 minutes. And they big, if I mention the name now, all of you will know who that is. They compromised on the power to get the popularity and to get the fame. Not knowing that the anointing will bring fame in the long run, not that we after it. But where the anointing is, it attracts people. The anointing is there for others to destroy yokes and bondages, not to make ourselves great. It is there to heal and deliver and set free. But you're going to these churches and there is nothing, no miracle. Maybe in 20,000 crowds, maybe one person got healed by the sovereignty of God. Just because it's a charity case. Not because of the faith of the person. And the fact that they practice gifts in the church. This is what we call the seeker sensitive church. The anointing is void, is removed. And guess what? People are flooding to them. Why? Because you have the end time church. You have the church that has power. And you have the church that has no power. And then the very church that I'm speaking about says let's have a vaccination service a day after the president's speech when I read my new testament they were non-compliant they went to prison I'll read it to you now they went to prison they were non-compliant they were beaten up because they were called and a law was put into place. You will not gather. And they decided to gather. Even though death could be the sentence. And then you see how God poured out a measure of anointing on that. Where even Peter's shadow began to heal people. Because they chose to stand and face. Adversary. Or face persecution or face compliance in the face but then you have coward Christians that doesn't even want to come to church because on a waste the mosques you know and waste this ways that you are a coward 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 are you guys with me and the Bible says that cowardly is the second on the list that will go to the lake of fire. The unbelieving and the cowardly. So I don't know what we're going to do when it comes to the rubber really hitting the road. But one thing I know is that God is in charge and God is going to lead us through it. But I'm not going to force people to die. And you say, but how are we forced to die? Do you know? How many funerals we have done of those who were vaccinated? Please, if you got it now, I know 80% of you have it. It's okay, you're not dead. Okay. I am just saying, almost all of the funerals we've done, almost all of them, were on the vaccinated. There was this one video where over 500 soccer players just dropped down dead. Heart attack. Some of them grabbed their hearts like this. And they dropped down dead. So, it's this 
season and era we're going into and time we are going into, we cannot do it without the anointing. Because the anointing is what gives you boldness. It's what gives you courage. It's what gives you the ability to face the enemy. To stand in the presence of your enemies, in the face of your enemies. God is saying, I will build, I will, I will put a table for you, prepare a table for you in the presence, in the face of your enemies. That is the God who I serve. That it doesn't matter if we need 70 million to build a building in Centurion, which we drastically need because we have some complications here now. Uh, very big complications. That it is in the middle of a recession, the middle class is being wiped out, supply chain, food shortages is going to come this year or by latest next year, by the way. Um, and don't think, oh, it'll never happen. <laughs> um, and those things we're going to talk about on Tuesday and get into it and all these things, but God can still do a miracle if an angel stood by me like a person standing right next to me walking in a field and the angel said to me i want you to plant a church in centurion on the 18th of september and then we planted then we planted kruger's door as just accidentally given to us and then from there we planted cape town fruitful and then we planted the united states why would god bless to take away are you guys with me so so the only reason we sit a crowd like this is because of limitation of space. Please understand that. Our church is much bigger than this. If you come conferences, you will see. If you come of our church, then on, online and broadcasting, our church is even 10 times bigger uh, than what we are here right now. And uh, I want us to go, go with it to Matthew 13 verse 8. I don't know how quickly I'll be able to go through this. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe if we can just get a part of it. Matthew 13, verse 8. Listen to this. Say with me 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. So this is speaking of the word of God being, being, uh, being thrown as seed. And uh, uh, being thrown as seed. And uh, it says some... A hundred, some yielded a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So there are, while I'm preaching here, there are some Christians that receive only thirtyfold of what I'm saying. Others only receive sixtyfold. Others receive hundredfold of what I'm saying. Some receive nothing. Okay, so, so that is because of certain things. When... You have spirit birds, as the scripture says, their birds would come and take away the word even before it lands, even before it gets to your ears. There's demonic activity in a person's life that would take away and steal that word away before it even drops into your ears. That's why deliverance is needed. I wish we had longer time because there's a lot of demonstration we can do right now. But I want to say this, that centurion, let's not get familiar. Are you guys with me? Now, let's go to, let's go to Proverbs 22 verse 20. Proverbs 22 verse 20. It's all going to make sense right now. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsel and knowledge that I may take you, sorry, that I may make you Know the certainty of the words of truth. Say the certainty. So that I may make you to know the certainty, the absolute of the words of truth. That you may answer words of truth to those who sent to you. Next, previous verse. Verse 20. Listen to this. Have I not written excellent things? The word excellent things means shilish. It means triple, threefold, three times or weighty matters whenever the bible speaks of something three times it becomes a weighty matter are you guys with me when it is the bible speaks of something three times it's speaking of excellent things and he says i do this so that you can know the certainty 
of the word of truth. That you can know the certainty of a thing. That once it is spoken, it is established. Where two or three shall agree on earth. So it shall be done for them. In heaven and on earth. If two or three shall agree. So the law of scripture is. If you can get two or three scriptures that agree to one another. So it shall be. So there are three. Listen, have your seats. There are three specific anointings. Three specific anointings. And I want us to get to. I want us to get to, uh, well, let, me, let me give you an example. For example, the Bible speaks of 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. The Bible speaks of an outer court, inner court, holy place. It speaks of the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Tabernacles. Are you guys with me? Threes, threes. The Bible speaks of the winter, spring, and summer. It doesn't speak of autumn. It speaks of winter, spring, and summer. It speaks of the good will, the perfect will, and the acceptable will of God. The good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In fact, in uh, Noah's Ark contained three levels. And the third level was constructed and given an instruction completely by God. Because third means maturity. And it means divine intervention. Once you touch the third level... There's a divine intervention. Are you guys with me? Jesus began his ministry at the age of 30. Joseph ruled on the throne when he was 30. Are you guys with me? The third level of the anointing, if I can say it like that, is what we call the level of maturity. It is the level of maturity. It doesn't come in the beginning part of your life. It doesn't come in the middle part of your life. Next month, we're going to do a very good two series starting next week, Sunday. But one of them is going to be on the spirit of uh, sonship or something like that. I'm still going to see. But uh, the difference between sons and hirelings. Oh, there are many hirelings. And hirelings never get anywhere in the kingdom. Servants get somewhere in the kingdom. Sons get an inheritance in the kingdom. God works in a kingdom, not in a business. A kingdom works with an heir. A kingdom has a family. A kingdom has a bloodline. Are you guys with me? A kingdom has a DNA. A kingdom has a king and his domain. Dumb. Now, when you are a son of the king, and when we speak of the spirit of sonship, when we raise up, when we train up people, even in the church, we raise them up under the spirit of sonship. Why not? If they are not, they are a hireling. And they will never care for the sheep. Any other better opportunity comes, they are gone. It's my life's work, I've seen this. So, any better opportunity comes. For example, Martin is preaching by us. He's supposedly a son. So, he's, he's preaching by us. And I can only pay him 50,000 rand, for example. And... Uh, Another church is watching him. Hmm. Leon doesn't know what he has there. And they begin to call him in. They say, do you know? Leon doesn't care about you. He doesn't appreciate the gift in you. You should at least be earning 150,000. I just want to let you know that, you know, we have this availability. That if the Holy Spirit will ever speak to you, or led you. I'm serious. You can come. Now the moment he leaves, he loses his destiny. And don't come with, oh, this is control. I'm speaking biblical principle. Because the star of your destiny has been stolen. You now changed and shifted from a son to a hireling. You sold your birthright. 
you went off the money instead of the call. Where the money opportunity, listen here, go off to the anointing. God will look after your family. He will look after you. I am a living example and many here are living examples of it. Don't let money be the decision maker. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost, let the leading of the Holy Ghost be the decision maker in your life. Which job, which this, which that. Jesus rebuked hirelings and he had no respect for them. He said they don't care for the sheep because they jump from one opportunity to another opportunity to another opportunity. I'll rather sit with five sons than a hundred hirelings and change a nation. Give me somebody that is loyal and you'll see a nation changed. You'll see cities changed. Are you guys with me? Pastor Stefan, have you seen it? I fired him. No, we didn't fire him. We had a mutual termination <laughs> agreement. No, but in a good way because his time was up. But everything was in God's will. But he could have chosen there to go to another church. And he chose to stuck it out here. Are you guys with me? All of a sudden I get a vision and God says he's going to plant a church. Tests. How so many Christians fail tests. Because the motive is money. The motive is finances. God will take care of you and your house. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Are you guys okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. You look so... Are you going to bounce me left, right and center? But I've got the anointing, brother. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, so with the anointing. So David had three anointings. The first time he was anointed by this prophet Samuel. And he was in the midst of his brothers. It was a private anointing. He was anointed. And after David was anointed there, he, uh, he, uh, 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 he was anointed as the king of Israel, but it has not yet arrived. It was his testing time that was just starting. It's what we call his first anointing. Are you guys with me? The second anointing that came to David's was at Hebron when he was anointed as king over Judah. And then seven and a half years later from there on, he received his third anointing, which was king over Israel. Now please understand that when he was anointed king over Judah, all hell broke loose in his life. Let's start with the first anointing. When he received his first anointing, he had the ability to slay the bear, the giant, Goliath, and the lion. He tore the lion apart and pulled the lamb out of his mouth. He killed the bear. Are you guys with me? And he killed Goliath. Why? He was anointed. The first anointing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If you are a Christian in this place, there is a first anointing already upon your life, and I'll explain it now. Then he had to wait and go through times of testing. Then he became a slave, a servant in the house of Saul. He became a slave. After you receive the first anointing, you have to serve. He played the harp for Saul, and Saul tried to kill him. And he played the harp and Saul tried to kill him. And he played the harp and Saul tried to kill him. There was testings. But after he received the first anointing, the protocol and the procedure was to go and serve, to become a slave. There's no difference between a servant and a slave. Jesus says, I became a bond slave, a bond servant. Which means that I give up my, all my will 
and give myself entirely to someone. That's the first anointing. The second anointing, then he received his second anointing at Hebron. It was when he was anointed at his second anointing where the Bible says the Philistines heard it. And they sought him out to kill him. The moment you pass the test of the first anointing and you become anointed the second time, all hell will break loose against your life. Every enemy of the des- of, of, of any enemy against your destiny will come against you. They will hear that you are anointed. Your fame will begin to spread. But then, that is, so the first anointing is within 30 folds. The second anointing is 60 folds. The third anointing is 100 folds. To get from 60 fold to 100 folds, you need 40. The number of testing of wilderness that you'll go through a severe wilderness. The Bible says that there was a war that broke out between the house of David and the house of Saul. And Saul's house grew weaker while David's house grew stronger because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Don't become a previous generation that persecutes a current generation your house will become weaker while their house becomes stronger I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying it is testings and wilderness that you will go through to get to the third anointing when he was anointed king over Israel and he was finally in a place of rulership took him 30 years you want it in two months have your seats are you guys with me? And the third anointing is a hundredfold. It is an optimal Christian. I wish I had time to go on. It was an optimal Christian. It was a Christian that is moving at such pace. I can see them. I have met a few in my life, including myself. That when you are in that space, God promotes you like this. Even in ministry, He takes His Spirit, He puts it upon you and puts you into a ministry. It's a place where you're so optimal. There's no double-mindedness. There's focus. There's speed and acceleration. There's fasting and prayer. Relationship with God. You don't open up your ears to gossip. Everything is about the kingdom. And you're dead completely, entirely to self. It doesn't matter who says what. You just have a good attitude. But when the devil looks at you, he sees light shining out of you. It is an optimal Christian. Ready for the hundredfold anointing. The thirtyfold anointing. You start a ministry. The sixtyfold anointing. You take a city. The hundredfold anointing. You take a nation or nations. It is when nations will begin to know you. Your fame will spread beyond you. I don't care if you are a businessman or a normal believer or just a professional. God can take the anointing and fame to cause you to spread. Are you guys with me? Have your seats, have your seats, have your seats. Three levels of the anointing. I need to go. Three levels of the anointing. Three levels of the anointing. The disciples... The first level they received, they were breathed upon in John 20 verse 20. And they received the Holy Ghost to go cast out devils. It is the anointing for salvation. The second anointing they received in Acts chapter number 2. When the Holy Spirit came down in Pentecost. And they became a witness. The first anointing, so with the salvation. Second anointing, so with the baptism with power. Third anointing, so with the boldness. And kingship. So they received Acts chapter number 2, the second anointing. And they began to be witnesses. And miracle signs and wonders broke out around them. Because from the first anointing, they did their servanthood well. They served Jesus in every aspect. Until it was time for the second anointing to come. But when the third anointing came, it was in Acts chapter number 4. Where in the upper room... They were praying again because of the threats of the Romans against them and the threats of the people against them. 
and they prayed a prayer and they said, Lord, give us boldness this day to preach the gospel with more boldness and power. And the Bible says that the building was shaken by the power of God. That the building was shaken and they left that place doing more signs. In fact, the Bible says mighty signs, wonders and miracles. Great grace was upon them all. Peter's shadow fell on people and they began to get healed. Why? They tapped into the third anointing, the kingship anointing, being optimal. Are you guys with me? Don't be a dead religious Christian. Don't even sit in your chair while I'm preaching right this right now. It tells me your spirit is dead and you lack oil. Are you guys with me? Say the third anointing. So let's go quickly. Let's go quickly. The first anointing. Have your seats. The first anointing is the leper's anointing. I'm not going to get into scriptures just for the sake of time. I need to get to the second campus. Is the leper's anointing. It is when you get saved from a sin, from a sickness that cannot be treated. Salvation. The second anointing is the priestly anointing. That is now when you begin to also serve in the house of God, but more severely. But that is where you minister now to people. So the priest ministered to people, ministered to God. That is where you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Very few Christians, 90% haven't reached the second level priestly anointing. They're all stuck at the first level. Or well, they're baptized with the Holy Ghost in a religious way. But there's no works or no acts are being done. And then the third anointing is what we call the kingly anointing. It is where you have rulership, where you have dominion, where word of a king is, there is power. That when you speak, demons tremble, demons recognize and hear. But what does it take? Somebody that is potent in the spirit, somebody that is optimal in the spirit, somebody that is potent, that is on fire, that is full of fire light in the spirit, that when they walk into a place the devil is scared, when they walk into a place the devil shakes. It's like John Knox when he put his feet on the grounds of Scotland that Queen Mary of Scotland began to shake in her boots and she said, I fear the praise of John Knox more than all the armies of the UK put together. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Raise your hands to the Lord, raise your hands to the Lord, raise your hands to the Lord. Say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I receive the anointing I receive the third level of the anointing make me potent make me optimal in the spirit in Jesus mighty name give him a shout of praise right now Come on, encounter, you can give me a better price offering than that. What a message. Just, just before we close the service, if everyone can just please remain standing. If I can ask every eye closed for a moment, every eye closed in this atmosphere, very important part of the service. And I want to make a call for two type of people and... I'm not going to call you to the front. Do not allow pride to remove you from what God is about to do in your life. Prophet now just spoke on that. Or familiarity. If you're standing here in this place, as we say every Sunday, and I want to say it again, I want your hearts to be open to what I'm saying right now. If you're standing here in this place right now, and you say, Pastor Martin, you know what? I used to be on fire for God. 
Man, I used to pursue the anointing. I used to be, I used to have a zeal, a passion and a desire for the things of God. But somewhere along the way, something has happened and I've lost that desire. I have lost that passion. I have lost that zeal. But I want to reconnect again. I want to recommit again. If that is you, if you're standing here in this place, listen. And you're saying that I am not sure about my final destination. That if something must happen to you right now, if you leave this place and something happens, and you're saying that, listen, I am not sure where I will go. There is only heaven or there is hell. There is no in between. This is something you do not want to play with. It is a very serious moment. Even if there's just the slightest of doubts and you do not know, then I want you to raise your hands for a moment for me. Just raise your hand. If that is you, just raise your hand. I see the hands going up. I see that. Keep your hands up for me, please. Just high up. I want no other hand raised except those who says that is for me. Just please raise your hands high. Every eye still closed, please. No one looking around. Every eye closed. Just keep your hands up for me, please. And then if you're standing, you're saying that I've never given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give my heart to Him. Then you can also raise your hands. I'm going to pray with you. I'm not going to call you to the front. If I can ask the ushers, please to locate those raising their hands. I want an usher to stand by everyone that's raising their hands. Just quickly locate them. Just keep your hands up for me, please. Just keep your hands just high so that we can see. Just raise them high up so that we can see and locate you. We're going to have an usher standing by your side as we pray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer that I want you to pray with me. But this must come out of your hearts. It must be real. And I want the entire church to pray this in assistance to those who have raised their hands. Pray this with me. You can lower your hands. Thank you. Is there everyone, everyone located? Two more ushers. To go to my left. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoice when a lost soul returns back home, which means the moment that those who have raised their hands, the moment their hands went up, there is a praising and a rejoicing that broke out in heaven. Come on, we can rejoice with the holy angels that is in heaven. There is no shame in raising your hands. I applaud all those who have raised their hands. It is a very important decision that you've just made. Most probably the most important decision that you can ever make. That was an excellent response. And you will see the anointing come upon your life because of that response. Amen. I want every eye closed for a moment. And then I want you to repeat after me saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask of your forgiveness. For every sin that I am guilty of, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior over my life. Father, I receive your divine call and your purpose for my life. I choose to walk in everything that you have got prepared for me. Father, I receive your forgiveness in the name of Jesus in full measure here and right now. I confess that from this moment forwards that hell is far from me and that heaven is close to me. Father, I thank you for your love for your compassion, for your mercy, and for your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, give God a praise offering. Then you will find those who have raised their hands. There's an usher standing by your side. I'm going to close the service, but I want you just for five minutes to stay behind. 
they're going to spend some time with you. They're going to pray with you, minister on to you. They're going to give you something. So please make sure that you stay behind. Very important. And then if I can ask everyone to close their eyes once again, just raise your hands to heaven as we close the service. Father, we thank you for the word of heaven that you have poured out into this atmosphere in this morning. I pray, my God, that every heart have received that message. Your word, your revelation, a hundred faults that your word have fallen on fruitful ground. I pray that by your spirits, my Lord, that we will have the ability to walk in the fullness of the message that was given into this atmosphere, my God, that we will understand every word that was spoken and that by revelation and by knowledge, we will have the ability to pierce through dimensions and walk in higher dimensions closer to you, my God. I pray that even throughout this day, may we rub shoulders with you, the holy uncreated creating one. May your very essence rub off upon each and every one of us. May your anointing remain and be tangible upon our lives, that even as we live this service, my God, that as we go into this world, a lost and dying broken world, that your anointing upon our lives will go forth and bring the lost back and restore the hearts of men back to you. Father, I pray that in the living name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give God one more praise offering. Then make sure not to miss tonight. As Prophet said, it's going to be an anointing service, deliverance service. Bring the lost, bring those who need deliverance. Are you guys hearing me? We're going to close off the series on angels. You do not want to miss it. It is going to be a power-packed, revelation-filled word that is sure to change your life. We'll see you again then at 5 p.m. Thank you so much.